George Orwell's classic dystopian novel and later movie tells the story of the consequences of totalitarianism, mass surveillance, and repressive regimentation of persons and behaviours within society. But there's something it got wrong. People had the freedom to not wear masks. Some could argue that in 2021, at least in some parts of the world, we have less freedom than the residents of this dystopian novel. Just some food for thought. Greater Brisbane went into a massive lockdown on the night of Friday the 8th of January. Admittedly, it's only for three days. But if history has taught us anything, these things often get extended. The reason for the lockdown is that the new UK strain has been discovered in Queensland, which is said to be even more virulent than its predecessor. Consequently, masks have been made mandatory. You must wear them at all times outside your home. Yes, this means when you're exercising, you must wear a mask. Even if you're the lone occupant of a vehicle, you must still wear your mask when driving. Apparently, the virus is so potent and so infectious that it can seep through your car's air conditioning vents, penetrate the filters, make its way out onto the street, and hunt down and kill the first innocent person it finds, even if you're not sick. Okay, I made that last part up, but isn't that what it would require to justify wearing masks while driving alone? Despite this virus allegedly being extremely contagious, infectious, transmissible, or whatever adjective you choose to use, there have been no new cases on the first full day of lockdown. This is despite the cleaner at the centre of the debacle having travelled all over the place while infectious. Despite this, Dr Young said 91 close contacts of the woman had been traced and returned negative tests. So the most transmissible virus that the world has ever seen — okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration — but nevertheless, a virus they're saying is 70% more contagious can't even infect a single close contact? And this was before masks were made mandatory. Okay, so maybe it's a bit too early to tell, but the very fact that they thought it necessary to test those 91 close contacts means that they thought that there was at least a chance they would come back with a positive test result. Police in Brisbane are arresting people who refuse to wear masks or stage protests or demonstrations. It's funny, only one day before you could have had a protest, but today you'll be arrested. It's interesting how things can change so quickly. But to be fair to the police, they have been taking a more lenient approach this time. Instead of handing out immediate fines, they've instead been handing out free masks and asking people to put them on. Despite this, three people still refuse to wear masks after repeated attempts by officers to make them wear a free one. But it's still nice, isn't it? Police handing out free masks to stop people getting a fine? It's kind of like 1984, but with flowers. Most of the UK has been placed into a strict Tier 4 lockdown. Almost 8 in 10 people in England are now under Tier 4 restrictions amid a surge in cases and alarm about the new strain spreading rapidly. It's time to put on your acting hats. The UK government have asked people in England to act like they have the virus as part of their new advertising campaign. Yes, if you're feeling well, you have to pretend that you have the virus. That's the only way we'll stop the spread — by pretending that we're sick. Hmm, I think we should do the same thing with insanity tests. Act like you've got it. You don't need symptoms to have insanity. Although wearing a mask when you're not sick, then pretending to be sick is often a dead giveaway. These two ladies, Jessica Allen and Eliza Moore, decided to meet up at the secluded Four Mark Reservoir in South Derbyshire to take a walk together. They drove five miles in separate vehicles to meet each other at the reservoir with their nice warm takeaway coffees. Guidance for the current lockdown says people can travel for exercise as long as it is in their local area. As they drove in, they saw a police van, a police car, and a load of police lying in wait. Ms Allen honestly believed that somebody had been murdered. As the women stepped out of their cars, the police immediately surrounded them and started questioning them. One of the police officers started reading their rights, all the time the ladies thinking that this must be some kind of joke. But as it turns out, they were fined £200 each. They were also told that the hot drinks they had brought along were not allowed as they were classed as a picnic. I don't know what constitutes a picnic in England, but according to Google, picnic, noun, an occasion when a packed meal is eaten outdoors, especially during an outing to the countryside. I'm not sure if a takeaway cup of coffee being carried while walking would count as a picnic in any legal court. Human rights barrister Adam Wagner said that, "...there is no law against travelling to exercise. The guidance is not legally binding and the police have no power to enforce it unless it is reflected in the lockdown regulations, which in this case it is not." 
The Derbyshire Police responded saying, It is up to each individual officer on a case-by-case -case basis to decide what is reasonable as the legislation does not prescribe a distance. So basically, police in England are making up their own rules. But yet, police officers have been spotted in a London cafe, breaking the very rules they swore to enforce. A passerby took a photo of what appeared to be several police cars parked outside the eatery and what appears to be a table of officers sitting inside enjoying their meal. This is despite the current nationwide restrictions banning gatherings and restaurants from operating table service. So yes, the rules pretty much only apply to the peasantry. But it's not only the peasantry who are confused. Police leader Ken Marsh has described the Tier 4 rules as baffling and that they don't make sense. If you're not scared by now of the new UK strain, never fear. This virus is in the news again. Bat warning issued after officials detect three cases of this virus in Queensland in one month. The rabies-like virus has been found in four kinds of flying foxes or fruit bats. So now, not only do you have to stay away from your fellow humans, you also have to stay away from flying marsupials. Uh, are they marsupials? I think they're mammals. Either way, you can't go near them. Three people have died in Queensland since Australian bat lysivirus was identified in 1996, almost as many as coronavirus, which has claimed six lives. This means they don't quite make it to the leading causes of premature death in Queensland. You should be much more scared of neoplasms. Anyway, as I said, three people have died in Queensland from lysivirus since 1996. That's 25 years ago, so that works out to be about 12 deaths per century, or 120 deaths per millennium. I think we all know what time it is by now. It's time to run. Thank you.